Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Matthew's Church. It's uh, Wednesday, the 24th of June today, another stunning summer's day. And um, today is the day when we remember and give thanks for John the Baptist in the church's calendar. So we'll be doing that today. And our uh, Bible readings are uh, focused on uh, the coming and then the ministry of John the Baptist. As we begin, let's just listen to these words from Psalm 145. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. So let's praise the name of God as we go through our morning prayer today, as we read God's word, as we come to God in intercession, let that all be in an attitude of blessing and praising God. So our readings today will be uh, Psalm 50 and then uh, Malachi chapter 3 and Luke chapter 3. And so we begin with morning prayer for Wednesday, uh, which to be found on page 149. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them? Mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So if you'd like to turn to Psalm 50, uh, which in the daily prayer book is on page 720. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. The Lord, the most mighty God, has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not keep silence. Consuming fire goes out before him, and a mighty tempest stirs about him. He calls the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful, who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, O Israel, for I am God, your God. I will not reprove you for your sacrifices, for your burnt offerings are always before me. I will take no bull out of your house, nor he goat out of your folds. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains, and the insect of the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the whole world is mine and all that fills it. 
Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and fulfill your vows to God most high. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall honor me. But to the wicked, says God, why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips, since you refuse to be disciplined and have cast my words behind you? When I saw a thief, you made friends with him, and you threw in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to deceit. You sit and speak evil of your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things have you done. And should I keep silence? Could you think that I am even such a one as yourself? But no, I must reprove you and set before your eyes the things that you have done. You that forget God, consider this well, lest I tear you apart and there, are no, there is none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. And to those who keep my way will I show the salvation of God. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Mighty God, dwelling in unapproachable light, forgive our vain attempts to appease you and show us your full salvation in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. So we've got our Old Testament reading now, uh, which is from the book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament. It's Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, page 904. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when it happens and he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hard workers in their wages the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. So that's the Old Testament prophecy of the coming of a messenger to prepare the way for the Messiah to come. And then we turn to our New Testament reading, which is Luke 3, 1 to 17 which is the fulfillment of that prophecy. Luke 3, 1 to 17, on page 57. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his ways straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. <coughs> John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, 
Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats of, or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn into unquenchable fire. We were thinking about John the Baptist in the uh, Lectio 365 app, which I was doing earlier this morning. And uh, that quoted uh, William Barclay, who says about John, that John was a man who lived his message. Not only his words, but his whole life was a protest. Um, and one of the things I love about John is that although John had this extraordinarily strong character and a very high profile role uh, as a prophet that his whole focus was to point away from himself and to point to the coming of Jesus. Um, so I think that's a challenge to us, isn't it? One, to live uh, a life where uh, the life we know that we lead on the inside is the same as what people see on the outside and it's consistent with being followers of Jesus and that all we do um, is not to point to us but a point to where, away to us to the one we follow. So perhaps that might be one of the focuses for our prayers today. So let's return to morning prayer on page 152. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I'm always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. And now we say together the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah, John the Baptist's father. This is the song that the father sang when he was told that uh, he and Elizabeth would have a child when they thought that would not be possible. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. <clears throat> so let's turn into a time of intercession. Pray for ourselves, for our calling to be followers of Jesus, that we might be the same as, <coughs> as John and point people away from ourselves to Jesus. And let's pray too for um, our national situation, the international situation in the ongoing pandemic as the lockdown begins to be eased. Um, some people will be celebrating that. Some people will know that brings a lot of burden to them in terms of how they prepare for that. Some people will be preparing to go back to work. Uh, and the churches, uh, place of worship, have been told um, that some form of public worship can begin from the 4th of July. So that involves a lot of decisions that uh, churches, church leaders, we have to make about how we respond to that. So all of those things we need to pray and to seek God's wisdom, God's guidance, God's strength um, through yet more change. So I'm going to use a form of intercession this morning where the response is, uh, I will say, Jesus, Lord of life, and we respond, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and the peace of your gospel to the nations. Especially we pray for your peace for all those people and nations who are anxious at this time. For people who are anxious because the disease is not under control. And especially pray for so many nations across Latin America. For those who are anxious about how to respond to um, easing of the lockdown. Bring your peace. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, bread of life. Give food to the hungry. We pray for those who are hungry in our community. And for so many people across the world who will wake up today not knowing how they will feed themselves and their families. And as we focus especially on uh, significant needs in this country, help us not to forget those who are in so much more need than we are. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. And today we pray that you would help us to follow the example of John the Baptist, to be consistent in how we live for you, and how we proclaim you, and how we point away from ourselves to you as the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, surround with your care those in particular need. And in a moment of quiet, we pray for those we know who are in need, perhaps those who are sick with the virus or those in other types of need at this time. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. And so we commend to you those who have died recently and we pray for those who mourn. And we pray especially for the family of 
Peter Doro, whose her funeral I will be taking later today. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. And the collect prayer, which today is the collect for the celebration of the birth of John the Baptist. Almighty God, by whose providence your son, your servant, John the Baptist, was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of your son, our saviour, by the preaching of repentance. Lead us to repent according to his preaching and after his example, constantly to speak the truth, boldly to rebuke vice and patiently to suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that's the end of morning prayer for today. Vicky will be leading us in evening prayer this evening at five o'clock on YouTube, and I'm back tomorrow morning at uh, nine, nine o'clock. So I do hope you have a, a good day, a positive day, that God will bless you and God will provide for your needs and for those of your loved ones. So have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow.